you go ahead and sign in over there. Good evening, welcome to the Town of Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 4th, uh, 2022. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we're gonna start with old business, uh, which uh, what we've got is policy review. Um, and this is, and I was just making jokes about this earlier. All right, so this is the new, uh, relatively new this was the the previously adopted return to work policy correct it is the board of health is going to be taking that up tomorrow because the cdc changed their guidelines and okay. so this is actually updated now okay so so fundamentally how do we want to take this do we want to did we ever formally adopt it as a board of selectmen? No, no, no. we did not. No. Okay. I mean, my thought was the CDC, the CDC is always going to be changing it because yeah. they, they seem to change it when someone sneezes at this point. Um, Which is a lot right now. Yes. <laughs> uh, my thought was that the town should at least have a baseline and whether that exceeds the CDC is up to the town, specifically Board of Health and then ourselves. But um, I think if we, if it was recommended to follow the CDC, that no one would be able to keep track of it yeah. because then the CDC always changes. Yeah I, yeah, I agree with you. That would have been my recommendation is that it's safe that the town of Brookfield follows the CDC, the current CDC, CDC guidelines. guidelines. So that as they change on the fly, we don't have to update it. Yep. It's always current that way. And in it, line it, with what the CDC wants us to do. It is, but there's also no like baseline so that anybody coming in, unless they pull out their phone if they have one and check immediately what the CDC guidelines are. The CDC may tomorrow say that everybody needs to wear masks inside the building. They have to be a certain kind, doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And someone coming in may not know that. They may just see follow CDC guidelines. They come in and then. This is the return to work policy. Right. No, but, yeah. Been exposed to COVID, not, so. But the return to work now is, what is it? You can return. It changed five. again, so that's why I'm confused. It's five days. It's five, it's five days five right days. now if you're asymptomatic. And then if you are symptomatic, it's five days after you've tested positive? Well, Negative. Mm -hmm. uh, this was as of December 27th. Nope. No. Yeah, they changed it again. Uh, if you test positive, everyone regardless of vaccination status stays within five days. If you have no symptoms, um, or your symptoms are resolving after five days, you can leave your house. Yep. And then it says to wear a mask only for an additional five days. Yep. But if you have a fever, you have to stay home until your fever's gone, mm -hmm. which makes perfect sense. People yeah. should not do that anyway. If you're not well, but, don't come right. home, you know? but that's what I'm saying. If, if we recommended a baseline of something that if we did, okay, you're home for five days and then what, what not, you follow CDC guidelines after that, that would give them five days to actually look up the CDC guidelines and then if it says, or contact you or, yeah. or anybody or, or the Board of Health and say, okay, I've been home for five days, what's next? Mm -hmm. Or I've been home for three, what's next? Yeah. And then at least there's that little baseline there of something. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That makes sense. Just to, like, I, I don't want to come down like you know, heavy handed and say 10 days, you can't come in, go away. Yeah, it's, but, it, it's been a struggle. Yeah, oh yeah. For people to stay home. Yep. <laughs> That's just. Yeah, it should be just common sense. It is. It's been, it's been a struggle. Yeah. No, you can't come to the building. But I have work here. I understand mm -hmm. that. It's very diligent and it's, it's wonderful that you're that devoted, but you really need to stay home. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So and it's, it's, it's not a thing against the person. It's just. Absolutely not. It's no. for people and coming in. Brookfield's lucky to have such dedicated employees. 
Right. Yeah. So, so what it sounds like to me, what I'm hearing, and probably the easier way to have done this would have been to take a motion to accept this and then have the discussion. But that's okay. Oh. We can we can have the discussion oh, and then yeah. and then have the motion. Yeah. Okay. So. Sure. Okay. So what I said is that the proper the, the proper order of things would have been to have asked for a motion regarding this policy, and then gone ahead and had the discussion following getting a motion to accept it or reject it. Fundamentally, um, we've had the discussion first, so we've taken things a bit out of order. Um, but what I'm hearing. Okay, which seems to be certain alignment is that we could accept this as is and then provide some recommendations back to the Board of Health regarding any revision that they do during their own review tomorrow, mm -hmm. including maybe taking out the hard 10 days and saying maybe it is five days five minimum days. Uh, and then any additional days per, you know, per, per CDC guidelines. Right, so that it would drop the, the baseline, but at least we will have adopted a return to work policy yep. formally. So um, I do have a question about also, and I had sent this back originally when the verbiage came out. Mm -hmm. It says the town administrator will provide a hard copy of their test results, a doctor's notes to the chairman of the select board to be placed in their file as the other employees. Right, because all the other employees submit their test results or their note from their doctor giving them permission to come back to me. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh. Yeah, in their file. And I'm not exempt from this. I can't give it to myself. Yeah. So. Oh, of their it, test results. Yeah. Got yes. it. Yeah. Yes. Roger. So it could be if, if, if it's another town administrator, administrator. Is here that they would, and they tested positive, they would have to do that with the chairman so that they're being treated exactly the same as everybody Got else. it. Okay. I didn't understand how, the way it was phrased, it just seems awkward. So. I would just put, I would put in the same manner as other employees. Yeah. So it's too many words. It's more words, but it, I think it makes it clear. Okay. So you want to take out chairman's well, board and put it in their no. no, no, put to, in, in, in their, in fi their file, file as in the same, same manner as the other employees. Okay. To be placed. Yeah. Beth, it would be to be placed. Oh yeah, to or, be placed. Yeah. Or just comma placed. Oh yeah, the, the catch to be placed. I have one that hasn't been used, so it's a guess. I'm going to have to use Thank you. This one works. I don't need a pen. Okay, so it now reads the town administrator will provide a hard copy of their test results slash doctor's note to the chairman of the select board to be placed in their file in the same manner as other employees. Yeah. Okay. It's a little long and wordy, but I think it's clear. You're right, it is. It is clear. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. Because <laughs> you wrote it. Yeah. To say right. I was writing it. So. Okay. So, um, do I have a motion to adopt this? I'll make a motion to adopt that. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And if the and if the if the Board of Health revises their copy of it, then we can just bring it take it up at the next meeting thereafter. Yes. So let's put a placeholder on there in terms of policy review for I know we've been doing it about every other meeting. Yeah. Okay. But let's make sure we take it up next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're meeting tomorrow, so um, I think it's plenty of time for I think it's at five thirty tomorrow. Yes. Okay, so first order of new business, resident complaint. Okay. How much time do I have? Um, 
typically well it's uh, well you're on the agenda so the floor is the floor unless it gets to be a, a in case, unless we decide to move the issue because it's it's taken you know a life of its own that'd be great thank you very much announced today they expect upwards of 80,000 additional deaths this year attributed directly to COVID or COVID related. That means the United States will be approaching close to 1 million deaths in the United States. The COVID infections in Massachusetts are higher than they were last year and are continuing on an upward trend. The reported cases in Brookfield are about 13%. Reported cases in Boston are 6.5%. Why? We don't have nursing homes, public transportation, bars, restaurants, event venues, all of which are incubators for the spread of COVID virus. And even though Boston is half of what our reported cases are, they have implemented a mask mandate in Boston. The Department of Public Health, and I will read you, statement. This is the Department of Public Health, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, dated December 21st. In response to the spread of the Delta variant and the emerging Omicron variant, the Department of Public Health now advises that all residents, regardless of vaccination status, wear a mask or face covering when indoors and not in your own home. That's pretty explicit. Quite frankly, uh, I don't understand the logic or rationale of the select board in, in their efforts to control this epidemic. It seems that each policy that the select board puts out is more remedial than preventive. And that policy we just read is uh, excellent, but it's an act of the fact. I think we should be focusing on prevention rather than what happens when somebody gets sick. Two, the latest policy leaves mask wearing up to the department heads at the town hall. What about the police station, library, highway department? I don't think that the burden should be on department heads based on their own opinions whether we should have masks or not. The sign-up sheet, unattended, is almost useless. Today, I walked into the uh, town hall uh, at 9.30. As I was walking in, a gentleman walked out without a mask. He hadn't signed in. I walked up to Al Jones' office where I had a meeting. There was a man in there also uh, unmasked, and he hadn't signed in. People who want to bypass the sign-in sheet just bypass the sign-in sheet. Or you can walk through the handicap access and bypass the sign-up sheet. If you're going to have a sign-up sheet and you want it to be implemented, it should be in some form or another attended. Quite frankly, I felt very uncomfortable in the office today by those two people. I was told the health department was not involved in the recent select board policy decision of 1228. And as of Monday, I understand we were not asked to attend this meeting. Why not? The community just recently received a robocall about transfer station hours. But not once over the last two years has there been any calls about COVID issues in the community or in the town hall. Why? It seems policies and procedures are established based on personal opinions and beliefs rather than documented facts. 
and advice from public health organizations. We have had a significant outbreak of COVID in the town hall. Let's not have our public buildings be a source of another outbreak. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions, but I feel uh, startled that we have not taken more aggressive action to prevent continued uh, outbreak. Pepper me with questions or rebuke anything I say, go ahead. Do you, I have something. Okay. Don't mind. Go ahead. Um, I actually was looking at uh, the data this morning myself and over the past two weeks, and uh, I saw that we were more than double the percentage of population positive than Boston. And that only includes the PCR testing or those, the molecular testing, as they phrased it, not at home testing. I do know for a fact that there are many more in town who have tested positive that took at home tests and found that as well. So it's not even documented. So the number's higher than what's here. And if you look at the Brookfields around us, they're all over 10% as well of their population, um, which is kind of nuts. And if you go to any of the restaurants around here, you'll see that EB Flats was closed for about two, three weeks. I think they're actually still closed. I don't think they open till the end of this week. Um, Lakeside was closed for multiple yep. weeks. We've had, um, I believe the clam box was ended up closed because of COVID. I know Dunkin Donuts and Westbrook field was closed because of COVID and staffing issues due to COVID. Um, I know what's happening even in deliveries. It's, it's getting kind of nuts. Um, I was unaware that no robo calls had gone out. I don't have a, a home phone in Brookfield. Um, I, I have a cell phone and it's not hooked up to any robocalls or anything like that. Um, so I was unaware. And you do make a good point, at least in, in my point of view, about the sign-in sheet. If there's nobody there to watch it, then nobody's going to sign in. Unless you have the, the wherewithal and the desire to actually sign in and put your information down. My sense is the conscientious people will sign in mm -hmm. and those are perhaps not as conscientious might not sign mm -hmm. in. Yeah, and, and, and I was actually at my, uh, speaking with my doctor today, um, I just had to get my five-year-old tested for COVID, uh, which is not fun to bring your five-year-old in to get his nose swabbed. And they were informed that the next six weeks will be about the uh, more brutal than they've been on any other um, times because of the fact that this variant is so contagious. Right. It's and not it, that it's it more deadly, to... it's no. that it's more contagious yeah. and that that is what is causing the rise in cases right now, yes. is that it's so contagious. It's may, so may, may, may I <clears throat> expand on that? Mm -hmm. I would ask if Peter Mazzuzo, who's a funeral director, who will test, test to the uptick, significant uptick, and unfortunately, not mm -hmm. only incidents, but deaths. Mm -hmm. I've, I've known a few who have passed away from COVID. Yeah. And I've known a few who have passed away from yeah. COVID who are so otherwise so would yeah. not have. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I would agree with Kermit, I agree with Adam, you made some excellent points that, you know, it's a combination of, of, of all of these things that we do to help stop the spread. You know, it's masks, it's vaccinations, it's social distancing, it's all of these things together. But I can tell you, with the funeral home I'm at, had a record December, we were on pace for January, and Omicron's only been around since, like, four weeks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and some people do get sick, primarily elderly, and people with underlying conditions. Yeah, they're having a real problem. They're having a real yeah. problem with senior fatalities with Omicron. Children. On, break, on breakthrough vaccination. The, yeah, the children. Cases where someone wasn't vaccinated, gave it to a grandfather. Yep. And although he was vaccinated, he had underlying conditions, and he couldn't fight it off. Mm -hmm. So I think anything that we can do to help prevent the spread of it would certainly be us. Right. All of these things help. And, and I've had the thought too that it, the reading over the policies that you know, was here and what came up to me is that we're, the policy that we voted on the Board of Health is again going to discuss tomorrow is essentially for people coming into the town hall, meeting with town hall employees so that it doesn't get passed from a town hall employee to either a community member 
or amongst town hall employees who would then bring it home. And I, I look at anything that's done here is to protect those who are coming into the town hall um, or going into any public spaces in town that you know, they're going in there and just as they should feel safe from any kind of uh, you know, verbal or physical attacks, it almost you know, we should try to keep them safe in terms of uh, um, the airborne attack disease of some kind. Like we wouldn't allow someone to go into a building if it's littered with mold. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that, um, if I could speak, I know that um, Brenda, over the tax collector has already had had a sign up that she wanted masks and you know mm -hmm. she had one and she even wears one also and I, I was under the understanding that Mr. Jones was wearing a mask also. Yeah I, th and I think I think what the, the the challenge is is that masking is more effective when both parties are masking okay but, fundamentally. What did you say? Now? I said masking is more effective when both parties involved are masking mm -hmm. period that's the science Okay, and there's and there's some people that argue whether, you know, quote unquote masking does anything or not. Okay, fundamentally, I think there's very clear science and very clear recommendations that um, uh, that it is one of the ways that you can control community spread. Um, Beth, I, I I agree. Masks are not 100%. No, no but it's just, just like seatbelts are not 100%. Right. But they, yep. they, do, they do have an impact on the, on, on, on the overall rates. Uh, injury and death of the person in the car. And, yep. and masks do. I mean, you know, that's, that's what the epidemiologists say. And, I guess. No, George, you can't. You can't speak because you have a quorum here and it's not posted, and you have control over this, so you can't speak. I put it on the list. Of, uh, uh, sign in. Should you? No, you, you, there's a quorum of the board of health present, and the board of health has control over this topic, so mm -hmm. no one from the board of health can speak on this topic tonight because it's not a posted meeting. I thought they could speak, they just couldn't vote. No, no. they can't discuss. It's yeah. part of the mm. deliberation is part of, of the open meeting law. Mm. Yeah, it's how if, if, it, yeah, that's if, right. if, if either of you came yeah. to a planning board meeting and I was there, it would be considered a quorum. Quorum, unless we posted right. as a board so of selectmen yeah. meeting as well. Things, but you couldn't talk about yeah. Yeah. Anything you else. Selectmen have control over. Yeah. Right. That, that's a sticky situation. That begs the question of why wasn't the why wasn't this scheduled as a joint meeting fund why wasn't this scheduled as a joint meeting fundamentally the, the previous meeting on the 28th it right. have been. I mean, they, they are they have the organization that we look for guidance to I, I, you may have the authority but you know you, you take guidance from yeah I, the department about paving the road well and and, and and fundamentally typically because they are an independent elected board mm -hmm. and this is a community health issue typically the board of selectmen don't really weigh in except in terms of policy relative to like i'll give you an example we could decide tonight as a board of selectmen um it's it's well within our purview to say people coming into municipal buildings and the employees need to wear masks okay because we control the municipal properties mm -hmm. It might not, and it, it, it gets a little bit fuzzy, I think, because of the construct of our town government to do, I, I don't know that we technically have the authority to do an in, in, indoor, outside of your home ban on gathering without masks as a board of selectmen. I think our board of health is actually the entity that has yes. that authority yes, in this type of community. The selectmen have no authority outside yeah. of the building. Right. Or so, the so, so, so. And that was right. going to be my question. What do, like, yeah. I did not believe we had anything beyond the municipals and maybe making suggestions. Right. Yeah. So, for example, you have, you have the authority to say that everybody coming in has to wear a mask. Yeah. Right. You also have the authority to say that, and, and the board of health can't override that. Right. But if you went the other way and said nobody has to wear a mask, and the Board of Health said everyone has to wear a mask, then everybody has to wear, wear a mask. Wear a mask, <laughs> right. So. Yeah, it's a. Right. 
Yeah. So it's 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 a it's one of those weird overlapping spaces where there is definitely a dependency, and we we probably haven't partnered as well as we should have across the two entities we with regards to this. Me, okay. The, the technicalities are such, but the, the, lo the logic is that we should all be working together. Right. For the, the common good. Mm -hmm. of the right. Community. Yeah, and that's across all boards too. It's not. Uh, yeah. 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 But the board of health, though, I mean, they are they have a lot of power here. You know. They, they do. They have but more power than we do. They, they do. And if they wanted to, you know, if they decide, um, say for an example, if they decide they wanted everybody masks, right. then we have to go by them. Even say if we had a policy that said that, like we said last week, that they didn't right. have to be masked. Right. So, so. And they're, they're meeting yeah. tomorrow, yeah. so this is a little. Premature. It's a little it's jumping a little the gun. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of backwards, but I didn't want Hunter to not have a chance to talk. Right. Well, so. I, I, I think I do. I do. I will say I do think it's good that this was on the agenda for tonight mm -hmm. yeah. because it does give Board of Health members the opportunity to attend. Right. Yeah. Hear what is discussed here instead of you waiting a, a week or two for a video or transcript or anything like that right. to come out. Um, and then go to their meeting tomorrow and with it fresh, just be like, all right, this is what we discussed. What do we want to do? So so I'm I'm a little remiss and I haven't done as much research, although I know I, I helped to find some of the state information regarding what's going on in which communities. Um, I'm really inclined to link our overall town policy regarding entrance into public buildings at least and masking requirements to the current positivity rate within the town so the positivity rates if you look at the town of Holly, they're at 50 percent yeah yeah however when you look drill down into the numbers the test is a percentage of the people who have been tested Holly right. is only testing two people gotcha so they've got one yeah. person with covid and one person without COVID, so their town is like in a really dark blue at a 50 percent positivity rate gotcha yeah so we've done uh, the last time i checked was 416 tests and right. 13 percent of those 416 tests were positive right not the residents themselves are 416 no understood but again what um not Adam was saying people are testing at home and they're not being counted so we don't have a true picture we don't have a true number what, yeah what the real numbers are. yeah, the, yeah. So it's probably much, much higher, higher. Mm -hmm. than when, yeah. when I looked this morning, um, the site gives you the state website gives you the ability to look at their data set, right? And that's where I and to actually like dig into the Excel sheets and stuff that yeah. they put yeah. together. And the last number I saw was it was 405 people had tested positive in the so town. So they must have done a lot more testing because I, I looked last week, so and I know, they yeah, the, the new numbers the, the new numbers came out, I think it was the 29th. Or something like that. They should have been of the past weeks. two weeks, or is it twenty eighth? It should. I think it's at Fridays. Friday. Yeah, it's at Friday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So and, it, and it's two weeks behind at that point when it's when it's released. So they don't have the stuff yet for like Christmas time on anything. Well, the point is whether it's eight percent or thirty percent. Yeah. It's a problem. Well, I'm, I do wonder if it would be feasible. I know, Beth, how you just said that based off percentages or numbers that are positive to base the policy off of that. I wonder if how we discussed with our return to work policy following CDC guidelines, if there'd be any kind of way for a masking so, policy to follow the state guidelines. What we had, what they what said. We had tentatively discussed in anticipation of tonight's meeting is if the town, so there's a color code. Yes. If you're gray, then you're not in the danger zone. Mm -hmm. If you're light blue. Yeah, we're red right now. blue or dark blue, the color, well, the colors that I saw were, were oh, yeah. dark blue. Yeah. But it could be, you know, masking at this when, when we're when we're moderate when we're moderate or higher or yeah, whatever if we're high we're masking at this capacity if we're mm -hmm. moderate we're masking at this capacity if we're safe then we're not masking or we're you know yep. only masking yeah i'll areas. have to send you there was one that i i saw that was uh it was gray green yellow red mm -hmm. and right now we're a red yeah because of the percentage it's 
a little wonky. So but. that was what we had talked about linking it to, so we yep. would know if, if they decided to mask that this, that that would, how we would know whether, where and how strict the masking should be. Mm -hmm. So we could link it to that so that it follows what the data is. Yeah, and then that, like, if that were to happen, it would kind of fall similarly in line to our policy that matches, that yes. goes with the CDC, so yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we had, unless I, unless I misunderstood that, is that the idea that, yeah, that that's where I was leaning towards was to, to link it to what the the risk of what the designated risk of community spread was as defined mm -hmm. by the state mm -hmm. fundamentally. Yeah. I think right now we're high. That's that would imply we should be everybody should be masking coming into yeah. to municipal properties. Um, the one challenge that we do have, and I know this was part of the discussion that we had, is that there are people. Just like there are people who who have a medical exemption from vaccination, we also have some people that that may have a exemption from masking because of, of other respiratory issues. Yep. And if that's so. the case, how do we protect them from angry people who don't understand? It's not really. We can't say this person has COPD and they can't wear a mask. Right. You know, yeah. Put a label on them. Mm -hmm. I have COPD. Yeah. Be angry. Can't I'm do not that. Trying to make you sick. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, so how do we how do we differentiate how do we protect those people who have medical yeah. reasons to not be masked yeah. or have um, yeah. you know it's a bit of a catch twenty two. I, I have a friend who has PTSD from service. Hey, yeah. Ask him. You're not gonna like the results. No. No. I, yeah. But he, for all intents and purposes, he appears perfectly healthy and normal so we're I don't I don't know how to do this yeah it's, it's a difficult this right. it's a difficult thing the, to decide that's why I, like clearly what you were speaking of the linking it to what the state says because mm -hmm. then it's following yeah we take the recommendations from them for a lot of things anyways and this is another recommendation mm -hmm. from them and I mean, the I guess only thing I see in here that's be still hard to figure out is the sign-ins and the tracking and stuff like that. Like it's easy to track amongst employees, right? Municipally, right. that's why like, we're asking people to come in. But it's if there's an, an exposure here. We need to let them know. Yeah, but it's difficult to if someone decides I don't want to do. I don't need to do that. They just walk by. Well, so I think I think. The calls come in because I didn't see any. I don't, I don't. Well, actually, what I would recommend is that is that when when people come into the town hall, they're coming in to speak to somebody. So if instead of signing in at the door, if we make the requirement be, you must sign for service at the various departments. Yeah. That might fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Then that fixes it. it, and and it's kind of like no shoes, no yeah. service, no mask, no sign, no service. I mean, and people yeah. can get upset and they can get angry. And Chief, I'm sorry if you wind up with some calls. Okay. Oh, perfect. I, I'm so, I'm sorry if you wind up with some calls over it. Okay. But but you know, no mask, no signs, no service while we're red. And then and then what we do is we have a posting at the door that indicates mm -hmm. what the community's current level is and what the entry to the public buildings are, and we send it out on a whatever period that they update the website for the state we we send that out to the various department mm -hmm. heads in the various buildings and yep. we and we tag our our masking and sign-in requirements to what the level is in the community so yeah. um kelly you, know, you make a good point about people who are have an issue because of medical problems or whatever we I mean, what is other mm -hmm. time Check what other towns. I mean, this is nothing new. No, but the governor exempted people with those conditions, and mm -hmm. and so did, during the whole thing, they've been exempt from the conditions, um, from masking. They've been exempt. Okay. They can't be refused service. Um, so, yeah. how do we know who's who? I mean, we right. will know, but when people come in. Right, and and is and, and that's going to be, be the an issue with people yeah. who come in who are upset that that person is not mask. Yeah, it, because they have a personal issue that they're not required to divulge to the general yep. public. Right, yeah. and and but here's the thing: they don't have to divulge why they're not masking. But it's just like it's just like vaccination status. You can say, I. I medically can't wear a mask without you're not actually revealing what your condition is. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
it, it'd be still up to the person if the person is confronted. Hopefully not. Yeah. But if they are and they say I have medical condition, well, that's. So, so let, let's say I had it. an issue like yep. Kelly was referring to, and we have a mask mandate. Is yep. there a person that they could contact confidentially that I could call and say I'd like to talk to Linda or somebody? Uh, I got a problem, but I need to get into the town. Is that, is that a way to solve the problem, you know, so they can... How are we going to manage it? That's a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, that's... Yeah. You think, how many people do you think have that uh, compromised position in Brooklyn? Well, that's not the point. The point is who's going to manage yeah. that, who's going to monitor okay. the, the, so, I think so, that. I think the challenge would be is that we, to a certain extent, with the employees, we know who those people are, okay? Yeah. With the community members, Unfortunately, we're in a position where we, we, we functionally have to take people at their word if they if they legitimately cannot mask for some other condition. Well, I, I, I do know that there are some departments who have put out there that if you can't come in, you can call right. or you can leave a, a send an email or whatnot, and then they've set up drop boxes so yeah. they're able to go uh, yes. around that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, if, you, so you can say that if you can't if you can't that. if you can't mask, then we'll make arrangements to provide you services. Right. But it may not be face to face. Yeah. So, yeah. and I and I think that's I, I think that is something that is a legitimate approach. And then it's not denying. So right, it, we right. You know, and and especially where even even with this, I mean, it's cold out now, but it's going to start getting warmer, and we get some warm days. I mean, fundamentally, um, especially early on, what people were doing is if people didn't want to come in or if they couldn't couldn't or wouldn't mask, they were doing their dealings outdoors. Mm -hmm. So, this transfer outdoors is These are really good ideas. a lot yeah. better. Right. Yeah, those so, so for people that don't want a mask and don't want to sign in, they can make arrangements yeah. for an outdoor meeting mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Yeah, we could probably even put um, the the phone numbers with you know the different departments can be reached in their yep. in their extension so that yeah, we have the, the extension on the door so they can the, call yeah, ahead. They and they, call they are online too. Yeah. yeah, they are on the website. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, so those numbers are on the website. Yeah, I've, I've, I've gone to the website many times. To but just still, grab you know, sometimes people, if they want, if, to come if they're on the front door, and, like, and we're telling the them they door, can't come in without the mask. Yeah. Yeah. You, Linda, you, know, you come up to the front door, you don't want to have to go back yeah. to your computer. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah. It, it should, right yeah, it should be on the door. Just call Al Jones yeah. and mm -hmm. yep. explain the situation. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and there will still be individuals who want to come in and not wear them and. I mean, being a public building, we can't not allow them in. That's the difference. Well, we can actually. Oh, we can. So the the short answer yeah, is is yeah. actually we absolutely okay. that's what we can decide tonight is to yeah. say oh, well. no no mass no sign no service. I mean we can do that. Okay. Well, what yeah. we can't do is say if you're going to if I'm running over to to to. Uh, um, uh, what we can't do is, is say, hey, if I'm if I'm going to run over to my next door neighbors, we mm -hmm. they have we have to mask indoors yeah, if yeah, I'm at my next door neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, no. So we do. Um, we are we, like 57 minutes late for the executive session. Though. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, we're actually 27 minutes late for the executive session. Well, it was, oh, yeah. It was at 6:30. Yes. You're sorry. Yes. Sorry. Right. This is why I have Excel calculator. So. Right, and we also lost our union reps to a call. So, no, they're, they're out oh, they're out back. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. Got it. So I thought I didn't realize that. I, they I looked like they, they left for a call. Yeah, Double I check. Heard about call. Okay. 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 But, Thank you for your time and uh, open minds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank, okay. thank you for coming up. Thank, thank you. you. So do do we want to make a call tonight? regarding masking based on the current positivity rate in in the buildings and then come out with a more elegant policy of how we scale it up or down or do we want to wait and see what the board of health decides tomorrow because i mean if they decide something then they could overrule us the, if we go doing that tonight the only well they, the would, only they can't overrule if we decide to mask they can only overrule if we decided not to. No masks. Yeah. 
Um, my only thought is we would have to wait another two weeks for a posted meeting, correct? Unless we schedule we another meeting. Oh, so just schedule time. time. That's true. That's yeah. As long as it's posted within the proper time frame. Forty-eight hours. Yeah, forty-eight hours. Forty-eight hours. Yeah. Posted meeting. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm soliciting a motion. Okay. What would you like for a motion? Uh, Can a motion be made in with a contingency based off of another committee, like based off of the Board of Health? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I guess I'd like to make a motion that we would institute, uh, wording is a little lost on me, but based on positivity rate, institute a mask mandate for the municipal buildings um, with the my brain just got lost it's hard it's I would, hard to word but it's something yeah like i would like to tie something to the positivity so rate of the town we, but well, well can we take an interim to create a policy contingent on what the board of health says yeah. there we go masking yes. to positivity rate and the policy will be developed for the next meeting because you're going to need to decide, how, is this only if people can't social distance? Do people have to wear their masks if yep. they're alone in their office and their door is closed and no one goes in it? Okay. Right. There's, a lot, there's a lot involved in this, not just yep. everybody who comes in has to wear a mask. You know, you okay. have to wear yep. a mask when you're meeting with somebody or you're face-to-face -face with somebody. Yeah. Not if I mean, this room is ginormous, right? So right. the CDC says you don't need a mask after 10 days if you have COVID. Mm -hmm. But... So do we need to wear them if we're not anywhere near each other? Do we wear them like yeah. with so, ears yeah. and then pull them up when we're next to yeah. each other? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, is there, is there, is there a So I'll, I'll make the motion, range, yeah, there? I'll make the motion that we institute a mask policy uh, based on the positivity rate contingent on the decision of the Board of Health, if that makes sense. Or the guidance of the board of health. You know, I, 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 I don't know. What do you want, Deb? Yeah. You're good at this. <laughs> Whip it okay. into nice yeah. succinct comments. You want nice succinct comments? Okay. I, I think what I, I think the first thing we need to do is to consider the fact that we are in a world of hurt right now in the community from a standpoint of positivity, and that i think some very legitimate points about us tending to to close the barn door after the horse gets out we we're already closing it after the horse gets out yes. but with omicron and the fact that most people probably caught the earlier variant and it, it doesn't seem to give good protection to have been sick previously with it i think we're closing the door against the next spike fundamentally yeah. So what I would, where I think I'm sitting right now is, is I'd like a motion to institute uh, a requirement for masking on town property at, 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 for an interim period of two weeks because of the positivity rate in the community currently, including um, a requirement for signatures at the point of service for community members, okay? Uh, until such time as we develop a fully fledged scaling up and back of of masking and and contact tracing requirements, I, I think that's where I'm sitting Repeat right now. Repeat the last part, please, because uh, I distracted. She was curiously and, and, typing. Until yeah, until such time that. as we have a full formal scaling policy for for masking and contact tracing uh, record keeping. So I, I'd like to say, I'd like to vote that for the interim of two weeks to start the point of service contact signatures and to, to put a mask requirement in place probably as of, I mean, fundamentally tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There's not enough time to warn everybody. Okay. Okay. But we can have the mask at the door. It should be 48 hours, right? Is that enough time? Okay, well, so you know, the governor yeah. gives you like two weeks before you implement something. So I, I get what you were trying to do, yeah. but mm -hmm. who's going to be here to do that? That's true. Yeah, you have to have somebody. Okay, have so maybe tomorrow. can we do it for starting Monday? Starting Monday. That works. Yeah. That would be the tenth. Uh, okay. 
So I think Monday the 10th through, and it, for a two week period following that, 24th. unless it gets superseded by a, a different yeah. policy. That is reasonable and doable. Okay, so can, can, can you uh, give me that one back mostly? Uh, I'd like to, I'd like to make a motion to institute a mask requirement on town property for two weeks, uh, including requirement for signatures at service until such time as a full policy has been put in place. Exactly. Starting uh, effective okay. Monday, Monday, January 10th, 2022. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Thank nice. you, sir. Can, can we get a second? I'll, I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, all right. So we will now, uh, can I get a motion to move to executive session under uh, exemption two? two? Uh, which is to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations. I'm sorry, it's under three, which is to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. No, nope, you were right the first time. No, but no, the first one, under the two, under two, two is non-union though. Yeah. No, this, this is um, contract. Is, this was given to me by town council. Okay. Number two is to discuss it with the union personnel. Number three is for you to discuss it, it privately after to make Got a decision. Got it. Okay. If you don't make one during the so, meeting. So let's try that again then. So we're going to. The glasses new. The glasses are new. And I am having like really are real problems cheaters? with this. They are cheaters. Thank you. <laughs> My arms are just not long enough. <laughs> so, all right. So it's to. Uh, Conduct a, so so can I get a motion to move into executive session? So under both exemption two and three? Yes, yes. perfect. There we go. Right. The first to. being to conduct the strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or, con, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. And then to discuss the strat under three is to discuss the strategy rel respective to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, which I do so declare. Right. You have, uh, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session with exemption number two and exemption number three. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Roll call vote. Or Adam Jolliker, aye. Roll call vote. Yeah. Yep. Beth Coughlin, aye. L Linda Lincoln, aye. And and we will be we will not we yeah. will enter open session solely for the purpose of okay. adjourning. adjourning. You don't really need to do that. You can adjourn within executive session. All you have oh. to do is vote to not reconvene in open session. Oh. Okay, so can I get an amendment to that? Yep. Not reconvene oh. in open session. Uh, Linda made the original. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, this is a oh. separate motion. Oh. Separate motion. Yeah, okay. Adam, you can do it. Yeah, right. I'll make a motion to um, not reconvene for the purpose uh, in, in a public session for the purpose of closing said meeting. Okay. We have a second. I'll, I'll give a second. Okay. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Telecom. Aye. Telecom. Aye. 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 Beth Coffin, aye. Linda Lincoln, aye. All right. So we are in executive session. Just got to need the camera to go away. Right. Lovely camera lady. Think it's the 